Hello, and welcome to Cambodice. This time around, I thought we'd start to introduce the subject of how to get things really moving across your boards. Let's go back into the board designer. This is probably something you've been doing quite a lot recently and would encourage you to periodically consider your workflows and make improvements wherever possible. Tiny tweaks can make huge differences on how your people interact with their workspaces. For example, a few work stages represented as columns might be worth highlighting. To do this, just click the palette icon at the top of the column and you can change the tint of any workflows that have this stage incorporated. Another thing to think about is what is the most comfortable width for that column? Areas that seem to congregate cards can be laid out so that they don't unnecessarily increase the depth of your board. Clicking the column settings opens up a few opportunities. You can add a description to the column. This is handy particularly when training newbies on board operations. To expose the description, just hover over the column title in the normal view. You can also assign active or queue status for the column. This comes into play when we really start to drill down into the board's flow dynamics. On this topic, each workflow gives you the chance to specifically define your cycle time for that board area. Some columns are active and others, regardless of being in the in progress area, are effectively waiting points. So many managers discount these metrics from their calculations. Once again, take a long look at this and check out the knowledge base article. This is enough in the designer for now, but feel free to dig around and constantly improve your Cambonized domain. This looks a bit better on the layout front. We've traded height for width, but do you really need to view every column in your workflow at all times? They can be collapsed easily enough to keep only the important stuff front and center. The next thing I wanna to touch upon is setting up card templates. Some of the clients that I speak to on a regular basis have really got this end of things nailed down tight. 95% of the cards appearing on their boards are effectively pre-constructed card templates. No one likes filling in forms and things do get forgotten. So remember, card templates are perfect for setting out complex tasks at the click of a button. We'll quickly run through a template set up in a moment, but an allied topic springs to mind. We're in the board settings area to set up our template, but before we do that, let's create a new card type. This really isn't rocket science, and it'll extend the number of categories available to you when describing your cards. Just choose an appropriate icon, give it a name and a brief description. This'll make all cards assigned with this type searchable. Okay, on to templates. Setting these up isn't much more challenging, but their impact can be huge. Hit the big plus button to add a new template and once again, name it and give it a description. This'll open up a sample card. First, let's give it a personality. Priority, color, type, oh yeah, and the custom fields. All of these might be useful to specify now. Don't worry if you might wanna change these details in the cards that you subsequently create. Each option can be opted out of separately on card creation. It's worthwhile to put some thought into what else you might want to include in your template. How about subtasks? Or a standard description outlining this work's purpose, approach and execution. The external link might be used to hook up with your document file server, an additional way of storing files and heavy, more confidential data. 
Let your imagination run free on this. And as always, check out the KB or contact support if you have any questions at all. While we're in the board settings, let's have a slightly deeper look at setting up your custom fields. The three predefined fields are Reporter, Created At and Last Modified. Check out the KB on how to apply these to their best advantage. Most of the other options are also pretty standard fields, either Text, Date, Number, Contributor, Link or Dropdown. This last one really is quite interesting. You can construct a vast list of potential options that best describe the work package. So users just have to open the menu to avoid the drudgery of filling in the field every time themselves. Once you've set up the custom field, you can assign it to any or all boards under your control. Hopefully, this has given you some inspiration to really start to fine-tune your Kanbanize environment. I want to follow this up with an addendum video that will take board automation to the next level. Next time, we'll take a look at business rules and how to best use them to get cards flying across your boards. As always, the same rules apply. We're here if you need us, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great day, and happy camponizing.